By doing that, we will ramp up robotic exploration of the solar system, including a probe of the sun's atmosphere, new scouting missions to Mars and other destinations, and an advanced telescope to follow Hubble, allowing us to peer deeper into the universe than ever before. We will increase Earth-based observation to improve our understanding of our climate and our world, science that will garner tangible benefits, helping us to protect our environment for future generations. And we will extend the life of the International Space Station, likely by more than five years, while actually using it for its intended purpose, conducting advanced research that can help improve the daily lives of people here on Earth as well as testing and improving upon our capabilities in space. This includes technologies like more efficient life support systems that will help reduce the cost of future missions. And in order to reach the space station, we will work with a growing array of private companies competing to make getting to space easier and more affordable. Now, I recognize that some have said it is unfeasible or unwise to work with the private sector in this way. I disagree. The truth is NASA has always relied on private industry to help design and build the vehicles that carry astronauts to space, from the Mercury capsule that carried John Glenn into orbit nearly 50 years ago to the Space Shuttle Discovery currently orbiting overhead. By buying the services of space transportation, rather than the vehicles themselves, we can continue to ensure rigorous safety standards are met, but we will also accelerate the pace of innovations as companies, from young startups to established leaders, compete to design and build and launch new means of carrying people and materials out of our atmosphere. In addition, as part of this effort, we will build on the good work already done on the Orion, or Orion crew capsule. I've directed Charlie Bolden to immediately begin developing a rescue vehicle using this technology so we are not forced to rely on foreign providers if it becomes necessary to quickly bring our people home from the International Space Station. And this Orion effort will be part of the technological foundation for advanced spacecraft to be used in future deep space missions. In fact, Orion will be readied for flight right here in this room. Next, we will invest more than $3 billion to conduct research on an advanced heavy lift rocket, a vehicle to efficiently send into orbit the crew capsules, propulsion systems, and large quantities of supplies needed to reach deep space. In developing this new vehicle, we will not only look at revising or modifying older models, we want to look at new designs, new materials, new technologies that will transform not just where we can go, but what we can do when we get there. And we will finalize a rocket design no later than 2015 and then begin to build it. That at <laughs> and I want everybody to understand, that's at least two years earlier than previously planned. And that's conservative, given that the previous program was behind schedule and over budget. At the same time, after decades of neglect, we will increase investment right away in other groundbreaking technologies that will allow astronauts to reach space sooner and more often, to travel farther and faster for less cost, and to live and work in space for longer periods of time more safely. That means tackling major scientific and technological challenges. Now, how do we shield astronauts from radiation on longer missions? How do we harness resources on distant worlds? How do we supply spacecraft with energy needed for these far-reaching journeys? These are questions that we can answer and will answer. And these are the questions whose answers, no doubt, will reap untold benefits right here on Earth. So the point is, what we're looking for is not just to continue on the same path. We want to leap into the future. We want major breakthroughs. 
a transformative agenda for NASA. Now, yes, pursuing this new strategy will require that we revise the old strategy. In part, this is because the old strategy, including the Constellation program, was not fulfilling its promise in many ways. That's not just my assessment. That's also the assessment of a panel of respected nonpartisan experts charged with looking at these issues closely. Now, despite this, some have had harsh words for the decisions we've made, including some individuals who I've got enormous respect and admiration for. But what I hope is, is that everybody will take a look at what we are planning, consider the details of what we've laid out, and see the merits as I've described them. The bottom line is, nobody is more committed to manned spaceflight, to human exploration of space, than I am. But we've got to do it in a smart way. And we, and we can't just keep on doing the same old things that we've been doing and thinking that somehow is going to get us to where we want to go. Some have said, for instance, that this plan gives up our leadership in space by failing to produce plans within NASA to reach low Earth orbit instead of relying on companies in other countries. But we will actually reach space faster and more often under this new plan in ways that will help us improve our technological capacity and lower our costs, which are both essential for the long-term sustainability of spaceflight. In fact, through our plan, we'll be sending many more astronauts to space over the next decade. There are also those who've criticized our decision to end parts of Constellation as one that will hinder space exploration below low Earth orbit. But it's precisely by investing in groundbreaking research and innovative companies that we will have the potential to rapidly transform our capabilities, even as we build on the important work already completed through projects like Orion for future missions. And unlike the previous program, we are setting a course with specific and achievable milestones. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. And by 2025, we expect new spacecraft designed for long journeys to allow us to begin the first ever crewed missions beyond the moon into deep space. So we'll start. We'll start by sending astronauts to an asteroid for the first time in history. By the mid-2030s, I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. And a landing on Mars will follow. And I expect to be around to see it. But I want to repeat, I want to repeat this. Critical to deep space exploration will be the development of breakthrough propulsion systems and other advanced technologies. So I'm challenging NASA to break through these barriers. And we'll give you the resources to break through these barriers. And I know you will, with ingenuity and intensity, because that's what you've always done. Now. I understand that some believe that we should attempt a return to the surface of the moon first, as previously planned. But I, I, I just have to say uh, pretty bluntly here, we've been there before. Buzz has been there. There's a lot more of space to explore and a lot more to learn when we do. So I believe it's more important to ramp up our capabilities to reach and operate at a series of increasingly demanding targets while advancing our technological capabilities with each step forward. And that's what this strategy does. And that's how we will ensure that our leadership in space is even stronger in this new century than it was in the last.
Uh, finally, I want to say a few words about jobs. Uh, Suzanne pointed out to me the last time I was here, I made a very clear promise that I would help in the transition into a, a new program to make sure that people who are already going through a tough time here in this region were helped. And despite some reports to the contrary, my plan will add more 